All right, guys, today I'm making five of the worst drinks and I'm gonna consume them all so that you guys don't have to. There's some really weird and wacky flavor combinations going on that I 100% know they just, they can't work. It's not possible. I've got high hopes for a couple of them. There might be, there's a glimmer of hope that one of them might be. Okay. I don't think any of them are going to be great. Just wait till you see these drink combinations, but they intrigued me, so I had to, had to try them and share them with you guys. Let's get started. First drink, a lot of these don't actually have names. So this is just green chartreuse and grape soda. Herbal liqueur, sits at 55%, really strong, potent flavors. And then you've got this sweet, like, there's a sticker over it so I can't actually see how much sugar is in there. Preface before I start trying these drinks is like, I don't drink sweet sodas, like soft drinks at all, really. I mean, I will enjoy a Cuba Libre, not that I drink them all the time, I don't have many of them, but I don't, I don't mix, like uh, I might have a, carbonated water, i.e. a soda water or a seltzer, and do a whiskey highball or use it in cocktails. But outside of that, I don't drink Fanta, Coke. Dry ginger, that's an exception, but it has to be a, a, not a sweet one, it has to be spicy and dry. Anyways, I am waffling yet again. Let's get on to the, the whole point of this video is just trying these weird flavor combinations. I'm sure you're all aware green chartreuse is quite potent, so I'm gonna stick with just the one ounce. I think the flavor's gonna stick up to sugary soft drink. Don't need to pour any more than that. Plenty of ice. <laughs> Look at that color. Alrighty, first up, green chartreuse grape soda. A lot of these don't have a name. Uh, they don't call for garnishes or anything. I mean, it's, it's not fancy enough to Earn a garnish. You can definitely smell the green chartreuse, that's for sure. Let's, let's get in there. And you you get a lot of sugar in green chartreuse itself. Like, despite it being 55%, it's a liqueur. It's got sugar in there. You're gonna have sugar and sugar and... Ugh. I mean, well, that's not pleasant at all. Um, it's sweet, grapey, Herbal, like the, the green chartreuse is still potent, man, manages to, to stand through those grape soda flavors. It's a weird combo. Definitely not something I enjoy. I wouldn't have this again, that's for sure. Drink combination number two. I believe this one's referred to as the Wanta Camper, Mezcal and Fanta. Now the original creator uh, found out that it was a little bit saccharin. Saccharin, I think that's what he said. Too much sugar in there, so he needed to balance that sugar out and add the Campari, add a little bit of bitterness, just add a little splash of that. So this is one of the ones that I have really high hopes for because I, I like mezcal, I like Campari. So why not add some orange soda into the drink? Ugh. All right, highball. Again, gonna stick with uh, one ounce, 30 mil, using Del Maguey. Del Maguey? Del Maguey. How do you pronounce it? I'm sorry. Plenty of ice. Oh, I just want to drink that by itself. You know, I think this is actually going to look kind of like Sunrise S. It's a, a, a Mezcal Sunrise. And it says a splash, splash of Mezcal. I'm not even going to measure it. I'm just, just going crazy. It looks good. I want to like this drink. Make sure I stir it so I don't drink that Campari that's kind of sunk to the bottom. There was, I think I poured a, a decent slug of Campari in there. So that's the the one that comes through the most. It's, it, it's bitter, it's bold, it's citrusy, orange flavors. Those flavors kind of do complement each other. You know, you got the orange Campari notes, the, partner with the orange soda and then you've got that smokiness it's surprising the campari kind of overshadows the mezcal in this one i'm trying to look for positive things in this by the way this still isn't a pleasant drink i would never walk into a bar and say hey bartender can i just have one one to camper uh, first of all they'd look at me and be like what the f are you talking about and second of all yeah mezcal campari fanta the a small cocktail bar pff, wouldn't even stock fanta for for good reasons let's make the next drink Ramazotti and root beer. Now, the thought process behind this drink, it makes sense. Ramazotti has a lot of cola-like, it, by the way, it's an Italian Amaro. It has a lot of cola-like characteristics and flavors, like sarsaparilla, cola nut, those, those kind of notes to it. So the thought process behind this was to pair, well, the original creator's thought process, I believe, was to pair uh, Ramazotti with cola-esque characteristics of root beer. So I have not had root beer 
been a very long time. 10 years, 15 years. It's like, it's like cola with a twist, but I don't know what that twist is. Um, I, I don't really drink a lot of, oh, awesome. High fructose corn syrup, preservatives. That's produced by Dr. Pepper. Let's get on with it. Let's go, what's the percentage of this? So it sits at 30%. I'll go 1.5 ounces of Ramazzotti. Why not? So I've got lots of ice in there. Add in a bit of root beer. And let's give it a test. If you like root beer, you might enjoy this. It's like cholera-esque and cholera-esque flavors kind of melding together for a more complex cola soft drink. It's, I'm, I'm just like clutching at straws here. There's so much sugar in it. It's like, it's actually quite viscous, but that's probably because I put one and a half ounces in there. I don't know if that's just root beer, but it's, it seems kind of flat and a bit lifeless. That might just be root beer how it is. I don't drink a lot of it, as I said, so I don't know. Next one. All right, this one is referred to as Juan Su's. Su's, a gentian liqueur. It's only sits at 15%, so it's really low ABV, but it's woody, it's herbal. It's got these uh, interesting characteristics to it. I'm actually getting quite low on my Su's. I've had it for a little bit. Pair with Mounju. And until just literally yesterday when I picked this up, I didn't realize that this is uh, actually an energy drink. I mean, I've had it a few times when I was younger. Yeah, it's like caffeine, sugar, it's got, ooh, it's got orange juice, food acids. I guess it's an orange energy drink with uh, less caffeine in there. So, interesting, interesting combination yet again. As I said, Suze is only 15%. So, let's pour two ounces in. Make sure it stands up to the, to the soda, to the soft drink. Right, Mountain Dew. I, I would really love to hear any of these uh, crazy combinations that you guys possibly drink while you're out or at home. Um, who knows, I might do, do a series too if uh, if you guys enjoy today's video. Or it could just be like, it could not work. All right, Dew and Suze. Mountain Dew, caffeinated, orangey, beverage. Oh. Suze is actually a really strong kind of woody characteristic to it. So mixing the white Negroni and that flavor really stands up and comes through. Even up against, you know, like a, a, a strong spirit and then use it with a gin and a little ad. But this, it kind of gets washed out even though I've put two ounces in there. It's just a sugar bomb. I, I'm really bad at explaining these drinks actually, but again, something that I 100% would never order. And I don't rec recommend trying at all. Ugh. Okay, this one here is blended scotch whiskey served with coconut water. I don't want to offend people because there's a lot of people in the Caribbean that uh, apparently drink this. It is served a little bit differently. They they use fresh green coconuts and they serve it in a jug on the side so that you can you can pour at your discretion and have lots of coconut water. You can do one part blended whiskey to one part coconut water. Yeah, young fresh green coconut has kind of some salty, savory and sweet characteristics to it. Unfortunately, I don't have any coconuts in my backyard, so therefore I've picked up H2 Cocoa, which is literally just young green coconut water. There's nothing else added into it. So it's the closest replacement I could get. Yeah, I don't want to offend people, but the reason this is mainly in this particular video is because I don't like coconut water. I despise coconut water. It's just not for me. Um... Yep, just double checking. Still don't like it. And for that reason, I'm going to measure two ounces. And I do like whiskey. Maybe that'll help. Plenty of ice. Try and get it in the glass. See, to me, this flavor combination of uh, scotch whiskey and coconut water, I feel like a little bit of acid, like some fresh lime, um, maybe some ginger, ginger beer. I feel like this is a good base to, to work with to mix something up. But as far as serving, but again, I mean, it, it has its place. If you're in the Caribbean and it's humid as hell, then, you know, this kind of makes sense. It's, it's light and it's refreshing. Um, yeah, and you, you would drink coconut water. It would make sense. You, you're in that place and, and time and place. That's what I'm trying to say, time and place. If I was in the Caribbean, I would probably enjoy this drink. Um, but here at home. <laughs> I definitely put too much. Probably shouldn't put that much whiskey in. It definitely did drown out the uh, coconut water flavor. Mm -hmm. 
it's got a nice texture, the, the coconut water, it's, uh, oh, I just don't enjoy the drink. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to enjoy these drinks because I know there's a couple of these drinks that people might like, but none of them do it for me. Don't recommend them. Do not drink these. These are the five worst drinks that you could create at home. There's far better drinks 